so this will be our first set of video notes for our biological psychology unit. And on the screen, I've put the modules that this unit will be. It's modules 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. And this video specifically is just over part of module 9. I also put on the screen some other words that you might hear in lieu of biological psychology. And really, all of these words mean the same thing. So if you see these words, you still know that we're talking about biological psychology, which is all about what's going on inside of your body during a behavior or during an emotional experience. So this is kind of um, a basic map of everything we're going to be talking about this unit. And we are just today focusing on neurons and neuron structure. And we'll be doing that the next couple of days. Um, it's really important that you know what they look like and exactly how they function. So what is a neuron? A neuron is a specific type of nerve cell that really is the basic building block of your brain. Um, it forms all of your memories. It stores all of... Um, any type of information that we need to process language, emotion, basically all of our biological processes are revolved around a neuron. And you have about 86 billion in your brain, and they are very similar to other cells in that they have a nucleus, a cytoplasm, cell membrane, all of those things. And hopefully you've covered that in science class before. But what you notice about the neuron, and this is a neuron right here, is that they have kind of a funky shape, um, different than the normal like blob cell that we might have looked at in science class. And so what I want you to do right now is I want you to copy down this picture, essentially. I want you to draw your own little neuron on your paper, and we're going to label its parts and talk about what each of these parts are. Okay, so... Um, Let's start with basics. So here at the top, this is basically the front of the cell, we have the cell body. And inside the cell body, this little blob here, hopefully you can figure out this is the nucleus. So this is where kind of the cell's brain is, if you will. And then neurons have these things called dendrites, which kind of branch off of the cell body. And what the dendrites do is they're in charge of receiving information from other neurons. And so the way neurons communicate is if, like, I stub my toe, for example. There's a neuron down there that realizes I stub my toe that communicates to neurons all the way up my leg, all the way to my brain until I've realized, ouch, I've stubbed my toe. And so it's communication to communication to communication. So the dendrites are specifically the part that receive that information from the previous neuron that says, ouch, you stubbed your toe. So then what happens is um, the information travels down here to the next part of the cell, which is called the axon. The axon is this really elongated part of the neuron. And uh, what this does is it carries information to the back of the cell. And there's a specific way that it, that, that it does that. So we'll talk about that in a second. The axon is covered by this substance called the myelin sheath. And I realize this is probably cut off on the screen. But the myelin sheath ba basically has two functions. Uh, the first is that it protects the axon. And the second is that it increases the speed at which the neural impulses travel down the neuron. So the faster that the myelin sheath is, is making the axon, the faster that the information that I stub my toe will reach my brain. Uh, that way I know I stub my toe. And then uh, the last part you need to know are these things called terminal branches. Sometimes they're called terminal buttons or axon terminals. They're all the same thing. These are the, this is the part of the neuron that actually spits out the information to the next neuron. Okay, so information comes into, into this side on the dendrites. It says, ouch, I stubbed my toe. It travels all the way down this neuron. And then the terminal branches kind of spit out that information so the next neuron can pick it up that says, ouch, I stubbed my toe. And then it goes all the way up to my brain at about 200 miles an hour. So very, very fast. So take a few minutes and finish copying this down if you haven't yet. Um, and just for, I think it's cool, this is a microscopic ver uh, image of myelin sheath over an axon. So these blue, this blue here are like, pieces of axon, and then you can see the, the fatty myelin sheath over top of it that insulates it and also uh, speeds up the process. Um, some interesting things about the myelin sheath, if you don't have myelin sheath, uh, that slows down your neural processing so, so much. In fact, uh, multiple sclerosis is it literally means the degeneration of the myelin sheath, and so um, that is what they struggle with when they have that disease. Uh, the last structure of the neuron that I want you to write down, uh, they're called the nodes of Ranvier. And if you notice on the axon, this axon's kind of, it has little splits in it, little junctures. And if we um, magnify those here, you can see them here. These little splits in the axon are called nodes of Ranvier. 
And basically what a node of Ranvier does is, we'll talk about these, this neural impulse here in a second, but what it does is it allows um, more of the ions to come in to keep the, the charge strong throughout the whole neuron. So basically, if the front of my neuron receives information that, ouch, I've stubbed my toe, it doesn't die by the time it gets halfway down this axon. Because of these little junctures, the charge and the information is able to stay strong all the way through this neuron until it splits off into the end out of the terminal branches. And then here's a picture of just a bunch of neurons that have been magnified. Um, I think it's really pretty. Okay, so now that we know the structure of the neurons, we're going to talk about three types of neurons that you need to be familiar with, and those are sensory, motor, and interneurons. And so first we'll start with sensory neurons. Sensory neurons are also known as afferent neurons. You need to be familiar with both names. In fact, you'll probably see afferent more on the AP test than you will sensory. And essentially all these neurons do is they're the ones that take information from your senses to your brain. So the example I used earlier where if I stub my toe, the neurons take in that information to my brain, those are sensory neurons because it's coming from my senses. It needs to go to my brain to let me know that I've stubbed my toe. In opposite of sensory neurons, we have motor neurons, and these are also known as efferent neurons. So we have afferent and efferent. And what motor neurons do is they, rather than starting at my toe, they start in the brain and then go to the rest of the body. So let's say I want to walk and get up out of this chair and walk. Those are motor neurons that will do that. I'll start in my brain, the information travels down to my leg, it lets my leg know, hey, pick it up. We got to start walking. So here's an easy mnemonic device for how you can remember sensory is afferent, motor is efferent, is you just write down the word same. So S stands for sensory neurons, A for afferent, so they're the same, and then motor neurons are the M, efferent, same thing, right next to each other. So write down nice and big letters the word same, and you'll never forget if you see motor, or if you see um, afferent or efferent on the test, you just write down this word, and you'll be able to tell which is which. It'll be super simple. The last type of neuron that you need to know is called interneurons, and these neurons essentially operate between the sensory and motor neurons, and primarily where you find all the interneurons are in your spinal cord. So if I stub my toe, those sensory neurons will carry uh, the information to my spinal cord, my spinal cord, the interneurons will take it from there in my spinal cord all the way up to my brain. And then vice versa, if I want to get up and walk, starts with motor neurons in my brain, goes to my spinal cord, uh, where my inner neurons take the message and give those to my legs, and then I'll be able to stand up and walk. Okay, and the last thing we're going to talk about today is neural communication. So we've looked at the actual structure of the neuron, and we've looked at the three types of neurons. But now, how do neurons actually communicate information between each other? So if I stub my toe, how does the neuron in my toe tell the next neuron over that, hey, she stubbed her toe, let's let the brain know? So it all starts, before a neuron even communicates, what we say is it is at resting potential, which means the neuron's basically doing nothing. It's not transmitting information, it's, it's just sitting there, okay? And we say that at this point, the neuron is polarized. And we say it's polarized because it has a slightly negative charge. So you must know that when a neuron is not firing, that it has a majority of negative ions inside of it, and then it has positive ions on the outside of it. And so what happens when it becomes active, you're going to see these, these ions switch out. So this is resting potential. Neuron's not doing anything. It's polarized. It's, it's got a negative charge. And it's just kind of sitting there. So how does a neuron actually decide to fire? We call it the all or nothing response. So each neuron has a threshold, like a minimum threshold that it must reach in order to fire information. And so once it has reached that threshold, so if I've stubbed my toe hard enough that it's reached its threshold, now it's going to fire that neural impulse all the way down the, the cell. And so what does that look like? So this part of the neuron, the dendrites here, receives the information that oh, she stubbed her toe, goes through the cell body, now it comes to the axon. Okay, And in the axon, what happens is, remember the neuron is slightly negatively charged, it's polarized. All of a sudden now, all of the positive ions that were above the axon are now being able to flood into the axon. We say that the axon is selectively permeable. It lets certain things in. And so it's letting these positive ions get into the axon, and um, it kind of disrupts things a little bit, and this is when the charge comes down. So now, because the positive ions are coming into the axon, it is no longer polarized. We say it's depolarized. And so it follows the nodes of Ranvier all the way down the axon, going in and out, in and out, 
until it reaches the end of the neuron, which I call the axon terminals or the terminal buttons, and then they spit out that information. So this whole process of when a neuron fires and zoom, there goes the information down the neuron, that's called the action potential. You must remember that name, action potential. Also, neurons only fire in one direction. That You'll never ever see a neuron pick up information from the backside and fire this way through the neuron. It always starts at the dendrites and moves to the end. And so the uh, mnemonic that we use to remember that is we say that neurons fire that way. Dendrites, axon, terminal buttons. So here we have all these neurons communicating. Great, 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 great. But these neurons, even though they look like they're touching, they don't. You, you need to remember that neurons never, ever, ever touch. They always have this little gap in between them, which we call the synapse. So what you're seeing here on this slide is a magnified view of the synapse. So here neurons look like they're touching, but they're not. So here's one single terminal button of, a, of neuron 1. Here's the dendrite of neuron 2. So what happens is, as the pulse, the electrical pulse, comes down the neuron, there's these little vesicles in the terminal buttons, and they carry um, neurotransmitters in them. And those are the chemicals that relay information. We'll look at specifically what those are um, in a few days. But they release those into the synaptic gap or the synaptic space. And what the dendrite or what the dendrite of the second neuron does is they suck in all of those um, neurotransmitters, that information, and so now it can send it down its cell. Now what happens is, here's another view, whatever is not taken up by the second neuron gets retaken back up into the first neuron. So we call it reuptake. So just to recap one more time, information comes into the dendrites. We've got the action potential going down the axon. It's spit out, the neurotransmitter is spit out into the synaptic gap here. The next neuron picks it up. And whatever the next neuron does not pick up gets taken right back into that first neuron through the process of reuptake. And then finally, after an arm has fired, it goes through this thing called the refractory period. And the refractory period is kind of a period of rest for the neuron. It's not able to fire during this period. And it's a very, very quick period. I mean, less than, less than a second. But it, can't, it, just, it fires, and then it can't start another firing until the other one is completely done. And it's gone down the whole neuron.